Part two of our uh, let's save the frame, if we shall call it that, uh, series here. So what we need to do is uh, make sure it's good, it's clean. We did that in the last section in our, uh, our last video. Uh, you might want to go over it with some Windex, make sure all the grit and dirt's off, make sure it's nice and shiny. Um, and so that brings us into what we have here today. So I tweaked it a little bit on uh, what we have here from part one. So I added a bowl of water with a little bit of dish soap in it. That's to keep my hands wet. Uh, we could also use some uh, gloves. I'm not gonna use the gloves because, well, I don't wanna stick to the tape. This is a 3M tape here. And I'd rather not take the risk of sticking to it all for the sake of saving some fingerprints because we're not gonna have like an edge where we peel away. It's gonna be, the edge is gonna be on it. So I don't want to take a risk of messing up the adhesive or anything. So I have a pin. You can't see it. It's really small. It took me forever to find this sucker in a haystack. But uh, this is for air bubbles. Any air bubbles that do get trapped that we can't work out with our squeegee, you can pop them just slightly, just enough to pierce the plastic. And then you kind of just push the air bubble out. Uh, you can also do it with your knife. I uh, still have the scissors pencil, exacto knife. I got a towel because I'm probably going to get sloppy here with a lot of water because the more water the merrier. You can't use too much water. That's what this is for. This is a bottle of water. So it kind of suds up just a little bit there because I added a couple drops of dishwashing detergent to this spray bottle. It was an empty spray bottle. I rinsed out really well. Filled it with some uh, lukewarm tap water and some dish detergent. So what we're going to do is Get this opened up, start sizing it for the frame. I can cut out little sections what I want. Basically, I'm gonna lay it up. I can mark it with my pencil. Um, if there's certain sections you're not sure and you don't wanna risk this, you could use a piece of loose leaf paper or printer paper, hold it up against there and trace that out. Use that as a template and trace it onto the back of here. And then, uh, then you can cut this out and use it with a lot more confidence, knowing that it's going to fit, then dry fit it. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Stuff's not exactly that cheap, and you don't have an unlimited supply of it. So, let's get into this. Alright, so, this is the first time for me doing this, so we're all going to learn along at the same pace. So, if I can do it, you can do it, and... Uh, Let's get into this. They have this tape down so I can try and pick this off here. It's some masking tape on there. Be careful. Go slow. Peel this off. This is the Amazon supplier apparently. Put that aside there. And voila. We have a roll of 3M tape. It's got a nice feel to it. And then uh so what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping is I come up over the top. Oh, that'd be perfect. I can actually come up over the top tube and down over the Santa Cruz and curl up just underneath. Now, if you wanted to run a second strip underneath, that's fine. Or you could go from underneath up and over, and you're probably not going to scratch anything on the top of your tube here, near your down tube. So that might be a little more practical. You'll see the edge of this, but... Uh, I'm not so worried about underneath here as I am just aesthetically looking at this up here. So I'm going to run this top down. I will have to cut out for the little gussets here for where my brake hoses go and uh, little uh, gussets there for my uh, bottle cage goes. So it's going to take a little bit of trimming, a little bit of work and uh, another trick, another tip when you do stickers or decals or anything, you never want to have a square edge. You want to take your scissors or your X-Acto knife and you want to round them off. A square edge has that point and they have a really, really good tendency of pulling up. If you've ever used stickers, and I know if you ride bikes like I do, you're into stickers too. Um, any square edge sticker likes to come up, starts to peel. 
uh, or if you have stickers that have rounded edges, they seem to last forever because you don't have that edge that can come up with the weather, with the environment, with rubbing on it. There's just seems to last a whole lot longer. So any of the edges I do have, I'm going to round them over nice and uh, we're going to get into this and see what we can cut out. I'm going to have to measure this length and here we go. So now I'm going to line it up about to where I want it to start and where I want it to end. I can lay that down. I know where I'm at here. So I'm going to use my knife and my scissors. In this case, I'm going to use my scissors. Make a nice cut. As straight across as possible. And you don't want to use some cheap scissors. And you don't want to use some worn out scissors. These are some uh, heavier duty scissors. They're cheapies, but they, uh, they're pretty good for this. So we see how this is going to wrap there. Come up underneath just nicely. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. So we're going to work on Get the corners here. Show you what I mean by rounding the edges. There we go. It's one edge rounded. And they don't have to be perfect and symmetrical unless you're really worried about it because you're not going to see one side versus the other even though that's pretty darn close. It's not too bad to cut. You could probably use just some regular uh, paper scissors that you have in your desk, home, or wherever, and get this done. And I just have the bike on a real bad side right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this frame around, get this piece on. So we continue. I've got the piece cut, trimmed, just as best as I can figure out. And uh, so we're gonna lay that down. Got our handy dandy squeegee where my stick pin went. Well, Bob's your uncle. I don't know. Back to the haystack, maybe? That's not good. So that's where. Uh, you can use the sharp tip of your razor and just tap it on there and pierce your film. So now we need our spray bottle. We're going to want to spray the frame down really good. Get both sides. The more the merrier because you don't want this drying out. Get my hands. Get my hands. So another trick you can do to uh, keep from getting uh, fingerprints and stuff on there is uh, take a rat tail file and just have at your uh, fingerprints and file them off. And then uh, some crazy glue and just crazy glue your uh, fingertips and that'll seal in all your bodily oils. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Do this. Get the water with a little bit of dish soap. And uh, the only trick we're going to have to worry about is... Uh, how it wants to curl back up but uh what we're going to do is start spraying it as we start peeling it if you ever done window tint i have many moons ago i imagine it's something like that so or at least so i've seen so we're going to start peeling here spraying spraying and praying 
Yeah, a little trash there on the corner. Just caught something. Now's the time to get any trash off it. That peels real nice, actually. I was worried about it hanging up. So what this is going to allow us to do is get it peeled down, get it laid up. And we'll start peeling this off. Again, you can't use too much of this. It's all going to squeeze out. And then the bonus is when you're done, you got a clean floor. So you need to worry about these suckers here, those up here. So we get all our air bubbles pushed out. Bring in our squeegee. Air bubbles out. This is also pushing out your uh, <clears throat> soap and water solution. Now if you do need to uh, do any last minute trimming, it's probably best to uh, get in there and get on it before it dries. I might have to trim this just a little bit here. Right there, it looks like I got a little air bubble. Yep, worked it right out there. You can use your, your fingers too. The squeegee's nice because it covers such a broad area. You want to make sure you have something soft that's not going to grab and tear up the, the tape. And what you can do too, if you have some bends, is you can go in with a heat gun, and that'll help the uh, the tape to conform to any bends that you have. And that looks pretty good. It's very clear. It looks really, really good. Oh yeah, look at that. And the sheen of the, the tape. Actually adds to it. his little bubble there.
I've got every tube, every everything covered. I started at the top tube, down tube, swing arm. I've got it all. I mean, just the shine on it makes it shine even more. So the paint underneath is a uh, good and shiny. We saw to that in uh, part one of our video series here. Part two, we got the frame protection on there. That 3M tape was really nice to work with. You just see how it just shines and pops. And if it gets scuffed up or scratched, we don't have to worry about buffing or anything anymore. We can just peel it off, cut another piece, and make that work. Um, now let's go over and uh, talk about some tips and some things I figured out while we were doing it. All right, so the finished product can't be beat. I am more than happy with it. Um, you know, it was like $16 for the tape and then just the other stuff, the, the buffing pads were, they're up, were under $20 and the other tools you probably have at your house, or at least it's probably worth an investment in getting. So really for the cost of an Invisiframe set, I've got tools, I've got this and I've got money for beer. So it's not bad, not bad, not bad. So into the little tips and tricks, uh, of course you want to have some zip ties so you can put your stuff back on now the tape worked really really well the tapes really durable once you spray it it's not too sticky either so you spray the frame as you peel this off we have wet hands from your bowl of water and so your fingers there's no chance of leaving any type of residue on there because your fingers are nice and wet you should wash your hands ahead of time I did and as you peel you spray now you can uh, you don't have to I had a few pieces where I tried not spraying the film and I put it down and it seemed to stick a little easier. You could still move it, but it wasn't as slippery. So you might want to experiment with that in some spots that are maybe hard to get to. I did use my microfiber cloth a few times. I found that very helpful. So as I'm going along, I'm squeegeeing the piece down and I find it's popping back up, maybe popping back up. And you have all these water droplets everywhere from your, from your spray bottle. So I would go and I would wipe. Now you don't want to try and get up underneath, just top down, you know, push away and get the excess water off. And that seemed to help immensely. What would also help, I know because I've done this before with stickers, decals, and, and some other things, is a heat gun. A heat gun's gonna help. Even a hair dryer. Hair dryer moves a lot of wind though. So you wanna be careful with the heat dryer. You don't wanna blow things into your uh, frame protection, like dust and whatnot. So the heat gun moves more heat than it does air. So that's that might be a little more advantageous to you. Just don't get carried away with the heat and burn it on. Uh, I didn't need to on this. I didn't use it on a lot of contoured areas. If you have a lot of contoured areas, you might need to do that. Now, I did have to stretch it in some spots, like the top tube up here, it was a little wonky. So I did have to pull it and stretch it and just have to kept applying it and working out the wrinkles and it was no problem. Now, it depended on your temperatures and, and your bike and the contour you're working, you might want the heat gun. The heat gun might also help it set up a little faster so you can work with it. And uh, you know, that's about it. It was pretty easy to do. It's, God, it took me several hours to do. Well worth it, about two hours maybe, three hours, two to three hours between stage one, stage two of this video series all together. But I'll tell you, it was worth it. It was just me, my bike. Um, nothing was, was super tedious. I just took my time, trimmed a little bit, made sure the edges were round, 
held the pieces up there, made sure they fit. And you want to leave a little wiggle room. You don't want it cut so exact around your gussets where it's going to be a nice, tight, snug fit because that's going to come to bite you. You want to watch out if you have an aluminum frame, watch out for your welds because your welds are going to bite you. It's not going to seat up tight against your welds. So you're going to want to back off of the welds a little bit. Uh, really, that's about it. You don't want to have it anywhere you're really going to bunch it up. But uh, I'd say give it 24 to 48 hours just for the adhesive to set up. Now a, uh, a hair dryer or a heat gun would help speed up that, uh, that drying process and help it to set. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to do that because it's raining outside. So the bike's just going to sit until tomorrow. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this video series. I hope you found this informative, helpful. Hope it saves you a little money on some uh, frame protection. And you don't have to dress your bike up like a tribal zebra with some stripes and some branding on there or anything and pay extra for that. So have fun. Stay safe. Keep riding. Like and subscribe. I'll catch you next video.